Hey guys, good morning and welcome back to this week's episode of What the Heck Do You Do? A weekly podcast where we highlight unique business owners doing unusual things in the South Puget Sound area. Uh, this week's show is brought to you by Violet Services and Rich Roads with New York Life. If you guys are interested in becoming a sponsor or coming on to the show, uh, you can email me at rich.roads at gmail.com and we'll get you all set up. Uh, what I'd like to do is introduce my guest this week, uh, Jimmy Smith with Violet Services. How are you today, sir? Very well. Awesome. Good Very to good. see you. Uh, so Jimmy and I met at one of our networking groups, Ignite You. Uh, <laughs> him and I have had a variety of really fun conversations over a, a number of topics, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to doing that again here today for all of you guys. Uh, so uh, Jimmy, of course, is with Violet Services, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and we'll also get into uh, his journey because I think he's got an interesting one. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and kick off and briefly talk about uh, what the heck do you do? Yeah, and I think that uh, this is a great um, exercise. You know, I'm really glad to have the opportunity because my our business is definitely one of those ones where it helps to kind of further explain. Uh, what we sell is essentially process consulting software solutions. Um, we've you know, we really focus on the process of a business and we're really interested in trying to uh, pair, uh, you know, solutions using software, you know, to help improve a business's performance, productivity, and profit. Um, we tend to find it ourselves working in simple things like websites, okay. um, integrating from a website into their CRM service, you know, but what we're really trying to do is offer something a little different to the market and that we're wanting to be kind of this unbiased software kind of consultant that is familiar enough about business and existing software systems that businesses can really, uh, you know, benefit from knowing uh, what to do, where to do it, and how. Because um, most of the time, every software that comes out, there is a consultant that will sell you that software, mm -hmm. right? Or they'll sell you that website, or they'll sell you that marketing. And they always tell you that it makes all your dreams come true, and it, that's what you need. And if you had it yesterday, you'd be success. Um, it's not always the case. Uh, in their eyes, it is the best solution, as that's how they were trained. But what we want to do is come be a partner with you uh, in bringing the experience and the knowledge that we have and assessing what does your business want to accomplish? What are your actual requirements? And then we will kind of explain, okay, well, with these softwares, this is where it would impact your business. And it may include a website overhaul. It may include, you know, moving forward with a, a marketing agency to further improve your pipeline. Um, there's, it may also include a better way to manage your resources. You know, there's more than one way uh, to improve profit in a mm -hmm. business. Um, and that's what we really want to focus on. So to give you an example, I have a, I'll have a client that comes in and says, hey, we need more leads. And I say, okay, well, if we increase your leads uh, ge generation by 20%, you know, what would you do with it? Are you looking to scale your business? Because if you're at full capacity now and you just want more leads, what are you going to do with all this business? Uh -huh. We haven't really thought that through yet. <laughs> okay, well... Uh, we would want to, you know, plan on scaling your business. How are you going to manage these resources now? Um, and do you even want to hire more people? And with this person in particular, they were like, yeah, we don't actually want to hire more people. I have a really tight crew. It's just the three of us, and it's, but we want to try to increase profitability, we want to increase revenue. I said, okay, so let's not bring you more leads. Let's focus on how do we build value in mm -hmm. your business, right? But typical marketing agency I may be able to accomplish the value structure but that's where we really want to focus on uh, you know what is it that you really want to accomplish what are you capable of what can you afford um, and what's within your skill set because there's all kinds of cool software out there but you have to have some you have to be somewhat savvy to know how to use these things um, so but that's where we are uh, that's what we what we want to offer and, and kind of what we really believe in uh, is you know making um, we, we want businesses to offer their best to our communities. Okay. Right? And that's, to me, the, the infinite reward is, you know, uh, is getting these businesses to be able to provide the quality service and products that they offer, you know, and just finding a way to help them be able to accomplish that. And when they provide our communities better, 
better service, our communities are a better place. So that's kind of the, the ultimate motivation there. Gotcha. Okay. So is it fair to say that um, you want them coming to you before making that major oh, purchase yeah. of, of a off-the-shelf software? Yeah. And so like where this comes into play for our much larger clients is when people are considering softwares like SAP. Okay. Uh, SAP is a pretty popular software. It's a process, uh, you know, oriented software. Um, but the problem with these softwares is that they're thousands of dollars for a license, a single user. Mm -hmm. You have to buy the software to basically learn how to use the software. And you can't know if the software is any good for your business until you've learned the software. So how long does that take? Well, depending on the size of your business, we've seen businesses uh, implement software like that for up to two to three years, and then they still are just now trickling into the making it uh, uh, something that benefits. Mm -hmm. Well, what we've found in the past, of my previous experience of being a consultant doing implementations, is that uh, through the implementation process, you start to discover that, like, you know, this actually is not the best software solution for your business. Mm -hmm. But because we had already sold them the software, they've invested so much into it already, we had to commit to. Uh, you know, making it fit, right? And I, I give the glass slipper example. You know, you're, if, if the shoe doesn't fit, it's uncomfortable. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't get used. It doesn't belong to you. You know. But there are software solutions that do fit uh, for your business, and we could have saved companies thousands of dollars, uh, and more, even money aside, just the patience of. Uh, you know the benefits of actually using the software. I just it, it's painful to watch these companies go through this grueling process of trying to implement software, uh, and it's going not going well because it's not a good fit, mm -hmm. right? And so yeah, we 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 really are trying to get ahead of this. And if we've got businesses that are considering you know PLM uh, and are interested in softwares like SAP. And what's you know, PLM, just to make sure? Product lifecycle management. Okay. Uh, yeah, so product lifecycle management is kind of an ideal, uh, like a philosophy of the life cycle of a product, you know, as it's, as it's created. Anyway, the, the software is around the management of this, this ideal, and, um, you know, everybody, when they reach this point of trying to manage, you know, specifications or product development process or supplier chain, uh, they start to looking, they start look looking towards software solutions um, and SAP and there's PLM for process. There's a couple other ones out there that specialize in the management of this um, and people will just commit to buying the software. Well, come to find out after doing all the implementations for five years, uh, there, the process can be fine-tuned well before software, right? And so this is actually, so this, this philosophy we can offer to a lot of businesses, you know, focus on the process, and then focus on the requirements for your business, and then let's go shopping for software, right? So it's almost like you want to train the, we, 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 we train them in a way that uh, when we're done, they don't get told what they need. They're telling what they need, right? So they know what the requirements are. They know what software, the software needs to do in order for it to fit their business because they're well trained into the process. Um, yeah, and because that's the idea, that is the uh, it's almost like you go to a car lot with a consultant and instead of the guy telling you that that red Camaro is best fit for you, the guy actually says, uh, you know, what do you plan to do with this car, right? right. Well, I need to tow a trailer. Okay, cool. Well, this Camaro is probably not a good fit for you, right. you know, but maybe it's a minivan and it can do both or all the above, um, you know, but you, you, as long as you're told, you, you know, shown essentially you know, what your business needs, what those requirements are, you'll have a better understanding of how to pick the right solutions for your business. You know, you'll know what you're looking for and why, right? And that's essentially what we're trying to accomplish. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I'm picturing the analogy of you decide you're going to work out, so you go out and buy like a Planet Fitness. So you have, exactly. So now you have every piece of equipment, but you have no clue what you're doing and you just <laughs> wasted a lot of money on it. Yeah. Or you can figure out a workout right. routine that works for you and then buy three pieces for your home gym and, and yeah. have exactly what you need. Yeah. It's so funny you use that, that example because I was using this with my wife last night about this gym scenario. And, it, and so the way to picture it is like you can't get past the entryway. Like it's the, there's equipment in there and there's contracting happening and the bathroom might not work. And all you can do is get in the entryway. 
right? And you've got this beautiful gym, but you can't use it to its potential because right. you just don't, you weren't ready for it. Gotcha. So uh, that's essentially what we're trying to do. And, and, it's, and it's hard, right? I mean, it, there's, uh, you know, process consulting uh, is one of the more difficult things to try to measure, you know, success, right? And, um, you know, having a, a method to kind of provide these evaluations of systems and processes and laying it all out for you, it, it, it's a planning part process. And, um, it, it's hard to, you got to have a pretty good track record to be able to show proof that like, look, this is, this is how it works. Like this gotcha. puts you in contact with clients and have them tell you how it worked out. Um, both good and bad. Gotcha. You know, so. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so how long is sort of the, the pre, pre assuming they haven't bought the software mm -hmm. and they come to you first, what, what, how long is like a typical assessment where you guys are in there looking at their internal processes, trying to optimize them? This is them. actually a really good question. Uh, I think that, so it's about 30 days. I would say it's probably about a month for us to do a, a full assessment of, okay. you know, for, for a good-sized company. Uh, the smaller the company, the faster the assessment. Um, but turnaround time is very powerful. Uh, everything in the industry right now is quick. Um, it, it, if you went to uh, any corporate five, Fortune 500 company, everybody in there is rotating every year. Mm -hmm. Right, they're going up, they're going down, they're going sideways. There's constant mobility happening in the industry today. And if you've some of these implementation projects for some of these companies are uh, up to two years, yeah. So by the time you're finishing this project, half your team that you were training is gone, right? right? So you're you, you, you've taught this person how to drive, they're knowledgeable about driving this car, and they've got all the tools necessary to do it. But the, because the project took so long, <laughs> they moved. And if you don't have your full project team, you know, there and, and implementing and in the implementation, uh, your chance for success goes down pretty significant. And so what we've noticed is that you've got to you've got to get your the, well, the implementation uh, needs to be much faster, like mm -hmm. we're like six months max. Right. Uh, but the assessment part of it also needs to be quick, right? Because the business has recognized the need. They uh, need to have this executed quickly. They need to assess budget, you know, right away. Right. Um, and then, uh, you know, they want to implement usually right away, you know, because this is a this is a need. This is this is this is a problem that they, they need to resolve. Um, but yeah, so the assessment part, I say, a max of about thirty days. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I um. So prior to my current role, I was a process project manager oh, for a big cool. company, and yeah, that was my and then an analyst before a manager. Yep. And yeah, some of those timelines would just keep getting pushed out and pushed oh, out. Yeah. We're like in a six month engagement and it's just like, mm -hmm. there has to be a better way. So I appreciate your, your need for speed to, yeah. to well, get through true. that process. Well, it's true. I just, you know, I've, even before I got into software, you know, we, um, working as a production manager, like when you roll out enterprise software, like it's a lot of work, you know, so it takes a lot of toll on turnover, our uh, learning curve, um, and it, time to delivery can just destroy a project if it takes forever yeah. so it's a big deal yeah so you talk about uh product life cycle management so um is your most desirable client like manufacturing type places where they're making things or can you also help like service type industries as well yeah so service type so with service industries you know when it comes to process we can help out a lot of small businesses with focusing and, and aligning their systems and and really having a design of process um you know, about 80% of every business, for the most part, does the same things, right? And, and has the same way of turning an item or, or converting a product, you know, so that we're, there's a lot of things that are available that are similar across the board. Um, but specifically with PLM, we, there's, there's a lot of people out there that are currently working with, with what's the discrete side, which is that manufacturing side. Mm -hmm. um, the consultants that we have are, are more versed in the uh, kind of more food and beverage side of things. Um, so making a sandwich, right, and it has layers of food specifications and, and sources of suppliers. Uh, that would be more of our ideal target audience okay. um, versus going for Boeing. Right, so <laughs> Boeing and, and Kenworth, um, you know, are more of that discrete. They still very much have, you know, PLM uh, in that industry. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, could we provide solutions on how to do a lot of that stuff? Yes, but there's quite a bit more of a market, you know, already supporting that. Um, 
So really focusing on with PLM in particular, it's more about the food and beverage industries. Gotcha. Interesting. So uh, tell us a little more about how you ended up sure. at Violet Services. How long have you been there, first and foremost? Uh, I've been with Violet Services since 2017. Okay. Um, it's been kind of a, a long journey. Uh, I, I started out, I don't know, I was t talking earlier about, uh, you know, wanting to, i born and raised in Alaska. I wanted to get out of Alaska, so I, I joined the Coast Guard, so I didn't have to think about what I wanted to do. Uh, and I learned, you know, it was one of the ones that would offer the most for me to learn. Uh, I did that. I was in the service for six years and then, um, you know, got out. Well, actually, you know, I should probably talk about what really motivated me. Um, I was a boarding officer uh, where we were doing all kinds of law enforcement and high speed, low drag stuff. And we were boarding these people's boats, these amazing, beautiful boats, like Paul Allen's boat. You know, it's like, uh, and I remember we would talk about, like, oh, this is kind of a small one, you know, this is not very big, you know, and, and we'd ask him how much it costs, and he'd be like, oh, this is probably like a $10 million boat. You know, and here yeah. I am saying it's small, right? <laughs> and, 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 but, but it's, it kind of put things in perspective, and I started thinking, like, well, am I ever going to be able to afford something like this, being in the service, you know? And, you know, and back, you know, when I was in the service, whoever worked hard got the work, right? Because mm -hmm. nobody wanted to deal with it. So uh, it, it, a lot of process and paperwork. So the more, the more effort you'd applied, the more it came your way. And I was like, you know, I bet we could start at Starbucks, or not Starbucks, but Microsoft, start out in the janitorial section and have that true Cinderella story and work the way to the top. And, uh, and so that's kind of what I decided I wanted to do. I decided that I wanted to go into the civilian sector and really try to apply myself uh, in, in through hard work uh, and, and really have it pan out. And I would say for the most part, it worked. Uh, I got into production manufacturing. I went through a, a couple different jobs, but you know, production manufacturing is where I sat for you know, almost 10 years. Um, I did start out as a mechanic, I entry level job. And before I know it, I was promoted to a department and then another department and then another department and then I had you know half the shop that I was responsible for and um and what were you manufacturing we actually ended up building coast guard boats <laughs> it was just okay. coincidental we they recently it was at Quechak Marine uh and they were um had been awarded the the RBM contract which is those you know they're the medium sized fast boats beautiful boats um but yeah we were building those just constant and uh, they, I, did, I was there for about seven years and in the process of doing that I, I had gotten to a middle management and really got exposed to kind of my first career frustrations um, I, you know where you have those scenarios where you're kind of damned if you do and you're damned if you don't and your boss is like you shouldn't you know be doing this but you need to get it done or I'm not, I don't know you can't complain about it there was a lot of s situations where uh, you know problems would occur and it was like I can't get these other resources to work they don't work for me I don't know it was it was miserable so I decided to like I need to get another job I want to move on to something else so I actually applied to Kenworth uh, for a supervisor position and they told me that if I had a degree they would have hired me that day mm -hmm. and I was like really just a degree, you know. And when you're in middle management, it's tough to maintain a, a particular salary level, right? Because these positions are filled with people who are experts kind of in their field. So if you go somewhere else, you have to kind of start at the bottom and work sure. your way back up again. Mm -hmm. Or you have to move up to the next level. So if I got kept out at a degree, I was like, well, I guess I got to go do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided to, that day, I enrolled into college uh, and decided to... Um, get into software development okay uh and a lot of people are like wow that was quite a, a transition quite a change for you and uh, you know with software i've always been uh really fascinated I, i've always been fascinated with how things work even as a kid i tore things apart and wanted to see the inside couldn't always put it back together that well but i got to learn what was on the inside uh and to me when when i, I read a book on just what software was and really the basic mechanics and and when i realized that it was zeros and ones representing small electrical signals to mechanical parts i was hooked yeah i was like this is so cool like wow. really you know and from there it just grows and grows and grows and uh it, it's fascinating to me 
Um, so I chose the profession into, you know, going to school and I didn't know what it was going to be like. Didn't know if I'd have the brain capacity for it or the patience to stare at code all day. Um, but I just, I kept wanting more. I kept wanting to get more involved. So I did that. Um, the previous boat place, you know, what's interesting is that once I decided to, you know, I was in a bad situation, but I recognized that I kind of had an out, right? I was like, I'm making plans for myself going to school. And, um, I decided to try to find a way to make it work at that particular job. I didn't want to necessarily quit, but they tell you there's two types of quit. There's quit walking out the door, and then there's quit. Your person stays, and they just kind of go through the motions. Sure. Well, that's pretty much where I was. I was pretty much stuck. I was like, well, I can't leave this job. i got to make it work, going to school, whatever. But it was, it was so interesting is that once I let go, everything started to come together. <laughs> the person, yeah. the, the resources that were causing me problems all got fired, you know, and, and then they were like, you know, we'd like to promote you to our Seattle branch. Just like, really? <laughs> you know, as, soon yeah. as, I, as soon as I had a plan, I'm like, I'm out, you know, uh, everything started to kind of come together. But it was like, all right, well, I'll just take it. That's fine. Uh, so I did that. And then um, I ended up getting laid off from there. Uh, uh, well, I remember what year it was now, but. About a couple of years later, they were holding up for another big government contract, didn't get it. And so we all got, a bunch of us got laid off. And I was like, really? I was so close to finishing my degree. I was going to ask, were you done with school? I was yet like, at that I had like seven to eight months. I didn't have that much left to go. It was just under a year. Uh -huh. And I was like, man, you know, that's bad timing. And I was like, well, how long is unemployment going to last? You know, it's like, mm -hmm. um, so it, it, anyway, I uh, had to get another job. And so I, I got a job as a, um, production manager at uh, uh, Norgan GT. And uh, that was a very stressful job. <laughs> that was one of the more stressful jobs I've ever had. I literally had like hair falling out of my face. It was so stressful, <laughs> you know, but it, I love the challenge. It's it was, come back nicely. Oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, I, I, um, I, I really enjoyed the challenge that we were trying to do something that nobody else had done before in terms of management and, and getting the production to where it wanted to go. So, but I learned a lot more about lean and, and uh, you know, more minute processes. And plus the automotive industry has been around for, for a long time and they've got it pretty well dialed in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so after that, uh, I finished my degree and I was working at this job and um, well, towards the end, I realized that like, I really like what I'm doing. I really want to get into this industry. How am I going to do that? And I started looking at jobs, and I was like, wow, there's 18-year-old kids that can, like, make video games for fun. I can't really compete with that. You know, It's like I, I don't have time to hang out at mom's basement and get real good at coding. <laughs> you know, I had to go work, you know, for a while. Uh, so I was thinking, how am I going to get in here? And so I was like, I think I could perhaps do some type of an internship. So I really consolidated all of our stuff to have like most minimal affordable stuff, right? I got rid of the nice car. I got a real crappy car. We moved into a place that we can really afford. You know, I really was preparing myself to uh, be able to take an internship, you know, and, and make, I don't know, $15 an hour mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and try to make that really work because I really wanted to, to, to try it. So, um, I started reaching out to some friends uh, that, that were in software. I ran into a buddy of mine that we, I play hockey with, and he, uh, you know, was like, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to my boss or whatever and see what he says. So I thought, oh, cool, you know, so he calls, next, next time I see him, he's like, yeah, he says, uh, I got you a meeting with him, you know, next whatever, and I was like, all right, cool. So I go down there, and the first thing out of his mouth is, you know, what do you want? <laughs> you know, and I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> I probably should have been prepared for a pitch or something, but I just told him, you know, that I really wanted to work and that I wanted to be in his, his office space and learn about what they do. And I, I told him that uh, this particular job offer, I was working four tens and I had Fridays available and that I would love to be able to come in on Fridays and just see what you guys do. Like, I've, I don't know what it looks like to be in a software company from behind the scenes. Okay. And I said, I'll take out trash. I will you know, do whatever I can to make it worth your while. I said, I would be even willing to pay you, right, to allow me to be in the office because I know that, a, you know, this dead body or whatever is not helpful. So <laughs> I wanted to try to, you know, compensate here. And he was like, well, how about I just hire you? And I was like, well, that works too. <laughs> so he offers me an internship, you know, where I would come in on Fridays. And uh, I did that for about six months. And then we finished the degree. And then I was, I just was, I, I was enthralled. Like, I just couldn't believe, like, that 
we got paid to do what we do we're doing i was like this is so cool so um so were you actually what were you doing were you actually taking out trash or did he get no he to, well were he you offered coding? Were he, you... he act, well it was interesting it's funny because these guys were so much better at code and so further along than where i was uh you know we were work they were working some pretty deep projects but um i I would help with uh, maybe the documentation of what was done, okay. right? So I could, you know, I have some technical writing skills. So I would, I would write down, you know, what what was accomplished, uh, you know, put it in like maybe, um, I, I don't know, just try to do the documentation portion of what work was done. And then sometimes it was maybe, you know, go and test it or implement it or okay. go through the, the quality control stuff. You know, I, I like, I, yeah, and I really was trying to contribute. They actually had me do some, a lot more QC stuff, you know, where I would go into the application and try to find errors, um, you know, and, and do some sort of contributor type things. But most of it was just observation, learning how to use the software tools, uh, you know, use their, their internal software tools on how to manage these projects and stuff. So it was very informative for me. Um, but I, I was, but I never had to take out the trash. I would have. But uh, they, they never made me have to do that. But, um, but so I finished my degree and I did, I really, I was like, I, I gotta get, I really wanna get into this. Like, I really would just love to just do this job. And so I, uh, I approached them and I said, I am going to quit my current production job and I am going to full time try to find a job working in IT. And uh, I told them, I was like, you guys are welcome to hire me. I would love to work here, but. I can't keep doing the production stuff like it's not pat not passionate about it. I really want to do this, and they were like, "Okay, we'll hire you," you know, full time. So they brought me on full time, and uh, I worked for them for uh, about five years. And so I started out as doing like a help desk, um, taking in tickets, solving problems, you know, the simple stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they started to recognize, they're like, you know, you're you're a pretty good talker, you know. And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, it's really rare to find somebody that understands software but can also understand the business side and then be able to communicate it sure. effectively yeah so they pushed me into consulting and i was like really i really like just working on the computers i kind of want to get away from people management you know i don't really want to i i you know I, i'm sure i get that it would help people but it's not really what i wanted to do um but that's what they wanted me to do and i was like well i, I will do what you want me to do because you kind of gave me the big break here so um whatever I can do to help you guys and, and help build a company. So I, I did it and, uh, and it, was, it was very helpful in a different way and going through the consulting aspects, I really got the chance to see how rare it is to, and hard it is to find somebody that is a quality consultant that understands software. Right. Um, there's a, a lot of times what you find is somebody who is, understands the fundamentals of software in the sense of what the right things are to say you know, but to have somebody say, well, we would like it to do X, and then to have a further understanding of knowing where it ends up in the database, how the actual software accomplishes this task is huge. Absolutely, uh, yeah. And so that's what I brought to the table. Um, I was a very technical, solid consulting resource, so I was pretty valuable with the company, and everybody that I worked with really enjoyed working with. Um, and then after I did that for another year, I got promoted again, and ended up having my own team of resources and um, manage the resources. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, continual growth in this company and continue to get more familiar about how to run teams and, and build, uh, you know, the, I guess, the team environment for accomplishing all of these software uh, tasks. And um, as much as I love this company, I started to recognize that it was a very young company and it was very it's always, it had always been very frustrating for me once the more of it's pretty typical when you further up into management uh you start to see more of the problems uh -huh. right and you start to see more of the pain points when i was just down there help tickets you couldn't you couldn't ruin my world man i was so happy sure. but the further i got up you get more responsibility uh and less authority and they want more results and um i got really frustrated where we would talk about some of these solutions and problems and we would never implement them mm -hmm. right we would we would they would just sit on them for years literally years i'm like these are very simple things i'm even offering to do all of this stuff for you if you just need, you just need to give me the access to do it, it never happened so i so that that moment i i actually had uh i i, I almost created violet services as a bit of an outlet 
right, to be able to just write policies and do the way, you know, if I could, it was almost like I, I could even take this company and present it to this company and say, look, this is how I think we should be doing things. This is what I've built, you know. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that kind of got more, more and more involved, you know, and over time I just, I had the website, I had all the contracts, I had all of our legality stuff put together, and, and I had essentially built this business, uh, you know, almost as an outlet, <laughs> you know, to be able to get all the stuff done. Uh, and then at the end of it, I was like, well, now what do we do? <laughs> or what do I do? I think that, uh, you know, I, I think we should try to implement something. But, um, and then at that time, I tried to uh, leverage what I knew and what I could bring to the table that was different. And uh, focusing back then, it was more about, uh, I had the idea of improving communications between contractors and uh, uh, customers, because that communication relationship has been pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I was like, let's, let's see if I can just offer you know, software and customer service skills to improve uh, you know, our communication between these two. Um, and then we ended up becoming a general contractor. It was a total disaster. Uh, well, I learned a lot, but I, I'm not a contractor, wasn't passionate about it, and we really, I really had to kind of revamp it and focus. And so that's why we got into more of the, you know, our, our, our big pivot was like, now let's just teach how to do these things. Let's, yeah. let's, let's educate on what softwares exist. If you want to accomplish the things that we, we've learned, uh, you know, let's just show you how to do that now. And that's essentially kind of how we got to where we are now. And... Um, it's been quite a journey working with small businesses. Uh, I, when I, the construction industry was very interesting. Like I didn't have to really work that hard to find work, especially here in Washington. There's just constantly people trying to build stuff right now. There's uh -huh. tons of opportunities. So looking for leads as a contractor really shouldn't be your, your biggest problem. It's resources. Right. Um, so uh, I forgot what I was going to mention with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, trying to focus on obtaining your resources as a contractor isn't, you know, shouldn't necessarily be your biggest struggle. It's it's how to manage your resources and find resources and and get the, um, you know, using software tools that exist. But uh, yeah, really trying to find opportunities to improve something and making things better and helping, you know, businesses with what they have, has kind of got us to where we are now. I love it. Um, and I think we have more in common than even I realized. <laughs> yeah. So I was a computer science major, but not a very good uh, programmer. Yeah, I've done that internship where I just filled in a bunch of holes from <laughs> website to database administrator mm -hmm. to marketing to coordinating implementations and all that type of stuff. Um, <clears throat> so it sounds like there was kind of two big decisions in your career. The first one being that decision to strip down your lifestyle so you could afford oh, yeah. to go back to school. And then that decision to ultimately branch out on your own and leave maybe the, the comforts of the the date, the yeah. steady corporate job with the paycheck and stuff like that. So maybe quickly highlight on just yeah, and I think kind of state of mind there or motivation for other people that are in similar positions that are thinking, I can't afford to do that or that's too risky and I, I don't want to do it. I think it's fair and important for um, – for me to, to, to explain a little bit more about the situation because I, I think people see from the outside looking in, they're like, oh, he just started working and it's just working and it's all, you know, it's turned on. Uh, it, that's not the case. I, I, a lot of what allowed me to, to do that is I had a, I, I was a stay at home IT guy, right? So I had a lot more time on my hands to deal with, you know, getting my kid to and from school if I had to, uh, if I needed to go to a, a business networking, I could schedule it, right? I had opportunities to do that. Um, when working a traditional job, uh, you have to make that huge leap, you know, commitment. There's, it's really hard to grow a business while having a full-time job, and you do have to reach that point where, uh, you know, you have to take that jump. And I would, I don't want people to think that uh, I, I totally did that, right? I, I, and for me, it was I took advantage of an opportunity, you know, where I could work from home, and with time I had saved in not having a commute, I applied to, you know, starting a business. Not everybody has that option. Sure. Um, and I, I have actually, this isn't actually the first business I've tried to start. Um, and, and I've reached other points with other businesses that were like, okay, I guess we have to quit our job. And I couldn't, at that time, I couldn't afford to risk. My, I felt that my kid was too young and 
our, our, the family, I should say, was too young, and I, I didn't want to uh, afford that risk. But, you know, I getting a point where getting to a point where you know my kid is old enough that was more sustainable, I guess, and, and uh, I didn't require didn't require as much time. Uh, it, it allowed us to reach a point where we were like, okay, well, could we make this affordable? And making these lifestyle decisions and planning for not necessarily a, a disaster, but you know, not just assuming you're going to be successful out of the gate. You really don't know. Sure. Um, you know, so getting rid of all of those obligations and downsizing your house and you know making all that financial planning so you can do all this stuff. And it's not just money; it's also time. Right. You know, you, you've got to come up with some ways. Make sure you have enough time to to really apply. I, I, I've met a lot of businesses that uh, have tried to do this balancing act, and uh, it's tough. It's you know, it's almost impossible. Sure. Um, you know, to try to to try to do that. Um, yeah, I, I, and then, you know, it's not that it can't be done, but it's it's hard, I would say, without having many opportunities to do that. So what do you do? Um, you know, probably squirreling away cash, you know, so you can sit on it for six months and give it a valid go. Uh, we definitely had those moments for us where I had money set aside. We said that we were going to go for it because um, I did have to quit that previous job and go full time. But I still had, you know, if we don't see this kind of return within this amount of time, uh, we're done. Okay. We're, we're, we've got it. We've got to do or die, you know, sink or swim uh, moment. And of course, when you get there, it's like, well, we're kind of swimming. Are we really dying? You know, I don't really know. We're not totally drowning here. It's never. It's. I feel like it's never that obvious. It's like opportunities. They're never that obvious. Sure. Right. It, it's. It, it's. <clears throat> they're uncomfortable. They're still questionable moments of decisions and um you have to uh still kind of use that gut instinct and and assess risk okay you know so sock away some so your advice would be sock away some savings for the jump yes and have a bailout clause and a timeline yeah. where you say okay if i'm right. if we haven't turned a corner at this point yeah which is always adjustable right because mm -hmm. i mean it's not like you literally sign a contract but at least prepare prepare to say okay this is the date where right. if we haven't turned a corner by this point then we need to go back to or reevaluate yeah and i would say that uh on top of that you gotta have your family in order too sure if you have one mm -hmm. absolutely <laughs> so you know for it's us a team game right with with my wife um you know she she's been more than supportive in making this and you know, helping me accomplish this uh but um See, told you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, where that actually looks like is us deciding to um, stick to like a, a structure, a schedule, quality time. Uh, you know, how much time are we going to, you know, put out uh, each week toward accomplishing this? Really having some time set aside to make sure you maintain relationships and you're successful in all areas of your life. Gotcha. You know, it's not just about downsize money and then just go. Right, because if you're not, if you don't have your your support structure, and if you don't have your life in order, and you don't have your, you know, you gotta have it all planned out. Sure. You know, and uh, if your if your family's not on board, it can it's like a it's like a weight loss plan. It can really sabotage your success or your chance for the success. The other person's bringing home Taco Bell, and McDonald's yeah, when you're trying to you know, go I'm just not into keto the whole, or vegan or yeah. yeah. You know, and, and it's it's very difficult to, to to succeed in those environments. And you know, as a person, you might have to ask yourself, you know, what's more important? Sure. You know, I, do do I want it? You know, do I do I really feel like that my sense of purpose is to create a business that provides a better tomorrow, or do I just want to make my wife happy? You know, right. <laughs> you got to make those decisions. Hopefully, it's both. Absolutely, yeah. But uh, it's having a good team. Awesome. Know, definitely helps put that uh, into into effect. I love it. Uh, well, I could sit here and talk to you all day, yeah. but uh, we're just about out of time. So uh, real quick, so if, if a small business is either considering a major software purchase or they know that there's opportunity to clean up their internal processes, mm -hmm. to potentially you know, increase efficiency, lower overhead, what's, what's the best way for them to, to reach out to you? Well, I, I believe it should be scrolling on the bottom of this video. Uh, you can schedule time with one of our consultants at violetservices.com. Perfect. Um, I'd love to, uh, I, I don't know, I'd love to help you get your business, you know, to where you want it to go. Awesome.
All right, Jimmy. Well, thank you so yeah. much. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you guys always as uh, for tuning in. Uh, tune in next week. Uh, we're going to meet with uh, James Beck, who's actually, ironically enough, a former New York Life agent who's going down a new path, and I'm super excited to, to learn more about that. So uh, have a great day, guys, and keep chasing your dreams. Thanks. Mm -hmm.